Good afternoon or good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Indusoft webinar about Indusoft Web Studio and developing applications for OEMs. My name is Fabio Terezinho. I'll be your co-host today along with Pavel Silwick from Guardian. And uh, before getting started, uh, I would like to again thank all of you and each one of you. Indusoft keeps growing, increasing market share, innovating, uh, releasing new functionality, and it's all thanks to your support, your assistance, your cooperation, and your use of the product. So thank you very much for keep promoting us and supporting us, and for taking the time today to watch the webinar, and hopefully it will provide information that will be useful for you to uh, build your project <clears throat> and continue to be more productive in the marketplace. Uh, so, I will provide a brief introduction about some unique advantages and benefits from Indusoft Web Studio, especially on the context of OEMs. Uh, quite honestly, features that uh, any kind of users uh, can take advantage uh, of from system integrators and users in general, uh, but they are especially useful for OEMs. Uh, that design one application and deploy the same application multiple times in multiple sites with a few customizations from each one of them. Uh, then I will pass control to Pavel Siwek, uh, who is an expert on compressors and control uh, from Guardian, and he will provide uh, an overview about a project they designed to control their compressors. Uh, and then demonstrate the actual application using the software studio and demonstrate the main functionality and the advantages uh, from the application that they designed from in the software studio and how flexible it is for uh, their technicians or even for the end user to customize the application and change the look and feel, define the variables they want to monitor even during the runtime, not having to redesign the application from deployment to deployment, which allowed them to have a huge, uh, uh, a very high uh, flexibility and also productivity to a point that to some typical projects, they can configure an entire project in a matter of hours, even less than one day. And then we will open for Q&A. If you have any questions, feel free to use the WebEx bar at the top of your monitor. You can use Click on the chat box or even go to the right and select Q&A and write your questions at any time and we'll be more than happy to address them at the end of the presentation. With that, uh, we'll get started on the introduction describing some unique characteristics of Indosoft and main benefits, especially for OEM applications. The first one comes to the uh, original vision from Indosoft that we kept over the years, that being a software team, a software-only team, we have openness in, in the heart when we design the product. So the idea is not to lock you in a particular hardware platform operating system. It's exactly the opposite, to offer you a user-friendly tool which allows you to easily design and configure applications uh, and then deploy and access the information on virtually any platform, allowing you to read any data through any, any network and access this information on any device, being a computer, a tablet, a cell phone, a PDA, an industrial HMI, an industrial PC, running Windows, Linux, VxWorks, iOS, uh, Android, any platform. So again, the idea is to be completely portable and give you interoperability with native communication drivers to communicate with different protocols or OPC or databases or uh, systems on the cloud using, for instance, MQTT protocol. So a complete level of interoperability and portability to, for data acquisition, manipulation, and presentation. With that, <clears throat> we have evolved our products over the years <clears throat> in a way to be ideal for customers that want to design a base application, a, a common application that can be easily customized for each deployment, which is 
is again a, a very uh, strong requirement from OEMs. So in this diagram, you can see at the base there, we have the generic products <coughs> in the software studio, which we keep evolving, but keeping compatibility with previous versions. So there is a decouplement between the product and the actual application. And the traditional way is to use the product, the development environment from the product, and hard code the application, create the whole application on top of the product, and hard code all the configurations, which can be done. But in addition to that, Indosoft offers several tools in a way that instead of hard coding everything on the application, you can create what we call templates and design the application in a way that this template is generic for, uh, with several features and interfaces for your industry, for your type of machine, for your type of process. And whenever you have to deploy this application, you build customizations many times during the runtime. So have features, for instance, to create tags during the runtime, create alarms during the runtime, configure alarm settings during the, the, the runtime, limit, enable, disable. You can even create graphical screens programmatically, uh, writing scripts to generate XML files and convert them automatically to binary graphical screens. So you have all the tools in the software studio uh, to build templates that can be used to customize the application during the runtime. And the application that uh, Guardian designed uh, and Pavel will demonstrate to you is a great example on how it can be done uh, in a practical sense. So the product is designed in what we call layers of abstraction, and we'll talk about each one of them. Like, for example, the layer of abstraction for the runtime platform. So here on the left, you see the development environment. We have a single and truly integrated development environment, IDE. So everything that you need to design the application or troubleshoot the application is in a single environment. And once the application is done, you can download the application to the runtime station and run the application with any runtime edition supported by Indosoft. So we have a runtime edition called Indosoft Web Studio Full Runtime for Windows 7, 8, 10, 2008 server, 2012 server, 32 or 64 bits. We have an embedded view runtime for Windows Embedded Standard 7. And we have a C view runtime for Windows Embedded Compact, formerly known as Windows C. So you design the application once, and then you deploy the application and run the application on any of those platforms. And recently, uh, when we released version 8 last year, we introduced a new runtime platform called IoT View, which is platform agnostic. And when you install in the software studio, we automatically deliver uh, this runtime platform compiled for Linux and VxWorks, both on ARM and x86 processor types. So on the left, you have a single development environment. The application is the same for any runtime platform. And once the application is done, you just download and run the application with the runtime edition for any one of those platforms. So it's one of our uh, unique advantages in, uh, in original vision to develop once, deploy anywhere. And since the application is the same, uh, if you design an application and run today on Linux, running on the Raspberry Pi or any other embedded device with a very small footprint, the complete runtime takes around three megabytes. So if you design and run the application uh, on any one of those devices, and for any reason, in another machine, in another site, uh, you want to run this application on Windows CE, Windows Embedded, or Windows Full Windows, you don't have to redesign the application at all. You literally download the same application to those platforms and run the same application there without modifications, because the application is truly platform agnostic. Database is another layer of abstraction. So you can design your whole application to save history uh, of trains, data, alarms, events, 
to any SQL relational database, even when you run the application from mobile devices, embedded devices like Windows CE, Windows Embedded Standard, uh, and we have a patent for this technology even from Linux. Uh, so you can save data to a local or remote Microsoft SQL Server, SQL Azure on the cloud, MySQL, uh, Sybase, Oracle, uh, you name it. And even to the Indusoft proprietary files. And if you design the product to a particular database and you, want, uh, and you go to deploy to a particular site, and the end user wants you to save data to their own database, it's extremely simple to change just one setting, and now the whole application saves and retrieves data from their own database. You don't have to redesign the screens, the tags, the logic, nothing. Connectivity is another strong point from Indosoft Web Studio in many different ways. The first one from the architecture where most HMI SCADA software uh, link one uh, device address, usually PLC address, to each one of the tags directly. And in Indusoft, you can link the same tag to multiple addresses from different PLCs at the same time. And it gives you two advantages. Number one, it's very easy to use Indusoft as a communication gateway among different devices because we have drivers, built-in drivers for more than 250 protocols, anything from traditional mod bus protocols, prof bus, device net, control net, uh, Omron PLCs, G, Fanon PLCs, Alan Bradley PLCs, Siemens PLCs, Mitsubishi, Bekoff, Twincat, Interbus, and so on, even new protocols for IoT like MQTT, all those drivers are built in the product in addition to the traditional, to the standard OPC interface. So we have built-in OPC clients for OPC DA, XML, .NET, and UA. So we do not force you to use OPC. You can use OPC or the native drivers. So in our architecture, you can <coughs> link the same tag to different drivers or even to different, uh, to a driver and an OPC client or two different OPC uh, client worksheets at the same time. So the same tag can re read data from one PLC and forward this data automatically to other PLCs or other devices. Or you can create an application that communicates, let's say, with Omron PLCs and if for any reason the, the customer wants to deploy another machine, but now with uh, Schneider PLCs, uh, you just change one set in the application, and now the application communicates with the Schneider PLCs. And if you go to another machine that the customer wants to use the Omron PLCs, you change one setting, and now just map the addresses for the Omron PLCs. So you can design the same application and have the, the communication map for several PLCs uh, included in the application, and during the runtime, enable the one that you want to use at any given time. Extremely flexible, several machine builders, several OEMs take advantage of this unique characteristic in the communication architecture. We have open APIs, interfaces to databases, tools for redundancy, and several tools to publish the application and visualize the application from remote thin clients, uh, including tablets, cell phones, uh, any type of browser uh, on any device, on any platform that supports ADTML5. So our new thin client solution is based on ADTML5, again, to give you flexibility and portability to access the information from anywhere, not only from Windows platforms, but literally any platform with a browser that supports HTML5. As last but not least, uh, we have kept the commitment to protect the investment you make when you design applications within the software studio. So this is a real picture from an application running back in 1997 uh, on the old Cassiopeia running Windows CE 1.0. And you can literally copy applications designed in previous versions 
and uh, copy those applications to a new device running Windows 10, Windows 8, Windows CE 7, even Linux and VxWorks, and run this application with 100% of compatibility with uh, applications built in previous versions. So we keep evolving the product, building new features, new technologies, new benefits for you, but we do not break the compatibility with applications you designed in the past. So whenever you, you decide to migrate your old application to a new platform, a new operating system, a new device, you do not have to redesign your application. With that, I will give control to uh, Pavel from uh, Guardian, and he will share his uh, desktop with us and demonstrate his application, uh, first provide a quick overview about his solution, and eventually demonstrate the application to us. So, Pavel, welcome, and feel free to get started when you are ready. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And um, I, my name is Pavel Siewek. I am one of the members of the Guardian Group. Uh, we are, I'd like to show you today the program, control program for our uh, comp uh, compressor and the driver uh, program to control. Uh, this is a GX uh, platform. Uh, we have, uh, this is our top platform. We also have uh, other platforms which are simpler and probably cheaper. And, uh, but I'd like to show you GX platform today. Guardian program was developed about 10 years ago uh, using, of course, Indusoft. And we grew and uh, improved uh, together with Indusoft during these years. And I think we right now we we have a quite mature uh, tested program which is running in i would uh, it would be uh, honestly to say about hundreds hundreds of applications and sites where are the applications uh, can be used in our uh, our program is involved absolutely majority is the natural gas compression uh, we are pumping uh, this, uh, the gas, and it is probably close to 80-90% of all applications. But we can also control the applications with water injection, or uh, we have some uh, applications with uh, vapor recovery units to control. Also, we we compressing the gas for uh, turbines to generate the electricity uh, for power turbines. Um, Three-phase pumping is uh, frequently used too, uh, like Bornemann pumps, for example, or other ones, and uh, also pushing acid gas injection back into the earth. Uh, this is one of the applications which uh, our program can be used to. What are the features of our uh, program? I will go in details a little bit later. Right now, I'd like to just mention in general uh, that um, program uh, features the security, uh, user-specific security. Uh, what do I mean? I don't mean the access from outside, like the Windows security. It can be uh, maintained by IQ people at site, on the customer side. I'm talking about uh, who can control the, uh, our Guardian uh, program from the screen. Uh, we have, um, we have se uh, several access levels which will define uh, who, uh, what kind of changes the user can uh, make, uh, implement, and uh, uh, I will show it, uh, demonstrate it later. Uh, we try to develop the platform which is very custom uh, configurable, so customer can con configure many, many things in our program. Uh, example is uh, both inputs and outputs can be, can be configured. 
totally starting with names, tags, locations, units, uh, all numbers alarming. Uh, operation of the compressor is not a simple one. Uh, we have several stages or steps or sequences, and uh, we can configure them as well from the HMI screen. It doesn't have to be uh, hard-coded in the program. User can uh, change many things uh, himself. All changes and all parameters are also logged into the logs. We are using proprietary logging uh, as a part of Indusoft, but customer can also use any database he wishes. Uh, history and external databases. Our logging is, as I said, proprietary, and uh, it is practically limitless. It is limited only by the size of the uh, memory, which is cheap and can grow uh, very much in size. Our standard time to collect data is one month uh, for all analog signals uh, every one second but uh, it can be easily changed to one year, for example. Uh, signals are logged, but also events and alarms. Alarms is obvious. Uh, uh, we need to know what's happened. Events, uh, we're logging events like who logged in, ho who logged out, what changes were done, uh, when. Uh, all this data can be retrieved and uh, viewed on the screen. Uh, and for any purpose uh, needed. Other feature of our program, we have uh, several trends to display, starting with simple trends with one pen only, uh, just for reference, up to the um, complicated trends, I will demonstrate it later, with many pens. Uh, user can name these trends. There are up to ten of them. Uh, each can be uh, can uh, be uh, the name can be given. The unique name can be given by the user, and the user can specify analog input and uh, analog outputs, and scaling and colors. Uh, all everything can be done from the screen. I think this uh, this is a useful feature. Engineering units. Uh, because our product is sold worldwide, we uh, offer two engineering unit uh, sets, and this is also changeable from the screen. Uh, this is example of pounds per square inch or kilopascal as a metric unit and imperial. User can create own uh, units and the uh, user can also enter own conversion factors. So there is no limit to existing units. It can be created to some specific uh, special units used only in some regions. I don't, this option exists. Multiple languages is another feature which is uh, useful when we're selling our product worldwide. Uh, for now, we created the uh, applications for in uh, for Spanish language, Russian language, Romanian, Polish. Uh, this is important that uh, we can switch languages on the fly on the screen. So the basic one is of course English, and uh, the second language can on each and every screen can be uh, switched to the second language. There is no limitation, we can enter more languages than two, but uh, so far there nobody requested this yet. Uh, remote control, uh, user doesn't have to be at site. We have several sites which are uh, running, uh, like in Australia, for example, in the middle of, middle of nowhere, and there is nobody at, at site. But they are controlled remotely and uh, it can be used through web access or uh, accessing uh, re remote sets of tags from the control room or using VNC, which is part of the package, uh, or other features like TeamViewer, for example. So we can also uh, program that our 
our application will send uh, emails to the users if something happens, any alarm or shutdown, the email can be generated and uh, sent to the customer. Uh, also, some of we have a bunch of applications which are running remotely using the radio uh, control. We offer this package as an add-in package and the uh, uh, user can access through the radio. Customizable reports, this is maybe less important, but uh, many uh, users are using them. The, every day they have to report some data which is uh, collected any time. The program uses the feature of Indusoft for generating reports, and every time on some specific time it can be uh, generated and printed anywhere on any printer or into the file, uh, wherever there is an access from the HMI computer to any printer on the network. I'd like to say about quickly about the benefits which I think are uh, beneficial. Benefits, beneficial, yeah. Optimization of energy, this is important stuff. Um, we have some add-ins also in the program which would uh, which would help customer uh, customer to optimize energy use. It's also related to uh, reduction of emission. I'm talking about air fuel ratio calculations. Using our program, it can increase the uptime from the wells, uh, so it will prolong the life of the well. All uh, it will also monitor the machine performance and. So machine will be maintained properly. There will be re program can remind the user about uh, uh, oil change needed or some other uh, maintenance which has to be performed. Uh, reduction emissions. I mentioned this with uh, optimization of energy use. And what we think is unique, or if not unique, this is really beneficial for customer. During life of the compressor, there are some changes uh, often has to be used, like uh, changing the number of uh, stages during compression, or adding some inputs or outputs, uh, different changes. I understand that many customers are, in this cases, they have to call the vendor and uh, ask for some service visit which easily grows into the $1,000. When with our program, many, many things can be done uh, by the customer because it's, uh, uh, customization is our high priority. So customer can add uh, any input, any output, and uh, it can be done from the touch screen. Uh, also, the changes in configuration, how unit performs, what the sequencing is of the operation, all this stuff can be done from the screen. Uh, security, which I mentioned already before, uh, we have these four security levels, and every user except guest uh, has uh, assigned the security level, which defines what he can change on the screen. So operator, as, uh, they have, uh, they can operate the machine, of course. Maintenance guys, uh, when they come, they can disable alarming, for example, and uh, uh, perform maintenance also during the runtime when the machine is running. Engineering is the highest level. Uh, person with engineer clearance can create new users, can define the access for them. Guest is the, as I said, practically no security. Uh, guest can see everything on the screen, but he cannot change anything. So no starting, no stopping, no, just uh, the basic stuff. Our standard application has 50 users right now, but it can be extended, and it was for some customers extended uh, up to, let's say, 200. Uh, but there is no limitation for the number of users which can be used. Uh, each control panel has 
own set of users right now what we offer. However, there is also option if the customer is using the network of, con of control panel to have central database of the users which can be maintained somewhere in the office. And then if there is connection through the network, every time this connection is uh, viable, the database on the panel is uh, updated with the new user, so it doesn't have to be only local. It can be global or uh, network-based. I think I mentioned this too, that uh, any action on our log, event log, it specifies the time, what was done, and by who. It is helpful to investigate sometimes some changes, uh, what, was happen, what was happening ago, uh, who did changes when. Uh, come on, distributed database. This is what I mentioned already, uh, talking about the database of the users, about the distributed database of the users. What we can quickly configure? I will demonstrate it uh, later, so now I will really fast, I'd like to go through this and say what we can uh, configure. Practically everything. Input and outputs, of course. We can configure uh, limits, uh, raw values, uh, units, uh, names, uh, scaling. Uh, we can configure alarming. Each input, we offer seven different alarms, which everyone can be, uh, of these alarms can be modified up to the wishes. It has own timers, the bounce timers, and uh, this is, we offer the standard one, of course, HH, high alarm, high, high, low, low, and uh, over range, under range, and open open circuit. Type of alarms, uh, widely used A, B, and C, where alarm is always armed or all alarmed, armed only between some sequences, which can be also specified by the user uh, separately for each input and for each alarm, actually. C alarm when it is disabled during start and then uh, it will be armed. The unique uh, alarm, type of alarm we offer is type D, uh, designed for the inputs, discrete inputs, which result from the action of some discrete output. For example, if we sending the signal over the discrete output to start um, a motor, we would like to see confirmation of this uh, as a signal, as a discrete input from the motor that it is running. Or let's say we sending signal to the uh, valve to open, we would like to monitor uh, limit switches to verify it happened, is it, was it happened, was it uh, the action was successful or not, and this type D alarm takes care of this. So we just specify the what state of discrete output corresponds to, to the discrete input. Uh, operating features. So this is about uh, what I said was about input and outputs. Operation of the compressor we know is quite complex. It's not just start and stop. We have the several sequences uh, blowing down, purging, uh, warming up, uh, the whole process of stop, start of uh, engine is uh, step by step. We open, we control, we can control fuel valves, in, uh, ignition and uh, cranking. We have, you using the sequencing uh, to control this stuff and define the, how it works. For analog outputs, of course, we have up to 32 PIDs. This number is set already, and user, again, can configure any PID he wishes for any purpose he wishes. So uh, I don't remember any application when we used all 32 PIDs, so it's always some spare ones. Uh, is it uh, something important or louvers or some other stuff? user can specify the PIDs and the parameters for them. Uh, PIDs can be uh, 
one-to-one, -one, which are the simplest one, or they can work together, and it is also can be configured from the screen. The output of one PADs can be used as a set point for the other one, or they can be configured as a cascade, working uh, as a cascade PADs. Uh, I mentioned about sequences. We have 30 sequences which are ready to be used. Uh, again, most of the time we don't use 30 sequences. They are just as a spare, and customer can specify several uh, attributes for any sequence. So each sequence can be characterized by the time, how long this action will uh, take, should take, uh, what parameters has to be changed, what the permissive, we call it permissive. I think this uh, word does not exist, but uh, it's, uh, it's self-explanatory. Uh, what has to, what has happened to satisfy this sequence so the sequence can change to the next one? For example, if we have sequence of warming up, what temperature has to be reached of the liquids, for example, oil or water, jacket water, uh, to satisfy this sequence and then move to the next one. Each sequence is also characterized by actions, so we can specify, the user can specify from the screen uh, what has to happen during any sequence, which valves has to be open or closed, what, uh, P, which PIDs have, will be working as a automatic in automatic mo mode or in manual mode, what outputs level of the output has to be. There are several parameters which can be defined for all of them. 45 actions is a lot, so it's uh, usually we, we don't we have, there are some spares which I left. Mm, optional alarm triggered by failing permissives, yes. What's happened if uh, time passed out and there is nothing happened? There is something wrong with the sequence. Then we have the, we can specify the alarm which will be triggered and will stop the whole machine, the whole process of starting or stopping and uh, there, it will be displayed in the alarm log and on the screen, of course. Operation, all fun functions are customizable. I, I mentioned this several times. Uh, configuration is one thing, but also what customer can see on the screen. So main control screen all, or PID screens used for control or overview screen, everything can be changed by the user up to what he is the best way for him and uh, what he wants to see. I will demonstrate it in a second. And um, uh, here we're saying about three screens with up to 40 user-specified process parameters. This is, yes, they are process screens which can be renamed by the user and the uh, user can decide what he wants to see on any screen. Pyrometer screen, the, so the temperatures of the cylinders can be monitored, and other application specific. So we have red screens for scrubbers, blockages, screw compressor screens, which are quite different than the reciprocating compressors. Maintenance, uh, maintenance can be done on the fly as well by bypassing the alarms. So uh, alarms, analog or discrete can be bypassed and some maintenance, if it is safe, can be done during the uh, running of the compressor. Um, the example is like vibration switch or some transmitter has to be calibrated. We don't have to stop um, the compressor. We can just disable it for a short time and quickly perform maintenance and put it back online. Uh, part of maintenance is forcing discrete output, uh, standard feature for testing. It cannot be done during uh, when compressor is running. Uh, User-defined alarms, uh, yes, uh, they are up to five alarms can be defined by the customer. For example, 
uh, as here you can see change engine oil alarm so uh, there is a timer which measures the, how much how long uh, the engine is running so after x hours of operation the engine oil should be changed so user can define the alarm which would say that after x hours uh, we have to see alarm which would tell us uh, we have to do some maintenance like change the oil ability to change time from screen this is standard feature uh, because everything is measured by time this is uh, the end of my uh, supposed to be short introduction but uh, I'd like to now demonstrate quickly how it works in real life this is uh, this is demo uh, unit and uh, it's not compressor everything is simulated so um, as I mentioned we have here we can change the language here uh, from English in this example on the demo there is a Polish language as an alternative this is my uh, native language and we have also some um, our control panels running in Poland so uh, I left Polish language as a a sample of the changing of the units. Main units for control. Maybe I will initiate the start right now of the machine, and then the machine will be running or warming up, and then we will talk about other stuff I'd like to demonstrate. So we can see that the, uh, the name of the sequence is shown quickly, and in the permissive area, we can see uh, permissives which are the parameters which has to be fulfilled so the sequence can successfully end and move to the next one for example we reach the warm-up sequence and we waiting for the temperatures to be reached to the predefined level and so slowly they will be growing and during this time I'd like to show uh, other features so configuration we can configure all input and outputs which I mentioned let me show you some example of uh, configuration of the stage one suction pressure analog input uh, as you can see we can change the language on each and every screen so uh, if there are English speaking and Polish speaking for example people together they can switch from one language to the other and then uh, see the difference so this is I change to Polish and then I can change it back to English in real life these changes happen quickly the uh, we our computer is uh, heavy under heavy stress right now with remote control and uh, all applications running so it is slower than usually so as I mentioned user can click and change the name to whatever he likes uh, in any language in Polish or in English language in this on this example um, tagging location metric units we can define the units uh, we can uh, define the conversion factor between two units together we can use the sample conversion a little table which will help us so we don't have to remember conversion factors for let's say Celsius and Fahrenheit and the proper conversion factors will be entered in the right location the scaling is here and the, the bottom, uh, lower part of the screen you can see alarming so each alarm high high low low and the others can be specified as a disabled or shutdown or ESD or cooldown which is slow uh, stopping each of this alarm can have any class uh, needed so if this is class B which is armed only between defined sequences we can define when this alarm will be active or armed for example like like this and bypass time and we can specify these things and save it I will not be saving this right now because uh, but this is as example we can go to the next one I will cancel it so all changes are removed uh, from this um, other configurations feature PIDs PIDs I mentioned 32 of them 
uh, each and every one can be uh, can be in similar way in two languages configured from name tag uh, dead band uh, PID types, uh, so we have set point link cascade, CV type one to one or list select, greater than select if more than one PID controls the output, action reverse, uh, and then we can choose which uh, inputs are used uh, or outputs and uh, everything is defined here on also the standard uh, pro proportional uh, integral and derivative parameters for process upset. What is process upset? Quickly, I will tell. This is the separate additional set of PIDs, uh, proportional integral uh, parameters for PID, which kicks in when the error between set point and the process value is high. So if normal action or if PID is not uh, fast enough to compensate for some quick changes, then this process upset parameters can kick in and make this PID much faster. It, in many cases, this is a useful feature. For example, when the gas is uh, mixed with water and uh, the, there are sudden changes on the suction pressure, for example, it would help compressor to work properly and uh, and uh, make everybody ha happy. Uh, other stuff, address for the PIA PLC, for example, we can control different uh, compressors using the same screen. And two buttons for sequencing, sequence permissive and sequence, sequence outputs. And this is what I mentioned, uh, what is characterized by sequencing. So. For example, uh, here during the warm up, we can specify which inputs we are using uh, to monitor and uh, what the limits are have to be. So there has to be less and or higher or equal of some values and other features. Um, it has to it can be specified. And the same uh, about I don't want to take too much of your time, but uh, there are the same for sequence outputs. For example, there are 45 outputs. Each output can be uh, configured here, and it will specify what has happened, what has to happen during the sequence. So if you want, you can specify that analog output you can pick whatever you like, like fuel valve, and uh, it has to be changed when this sequence starts, let's say, to 50%. So this is it. after saving, this element will be executed in real time. Uh, right now, I will not be saving this. I will go to our control screen quickly because our warm-up parameters are already uh, our liquids are warm enough, and we move to the uh, ready to load. So now when the customer uh, think it's ready, the compressor can load, and um, the speed will grow, as we can see, and the bypass valve will be slowly closing. This is in general about operation, about the useful features uh, which make life easier for the customer. On this screen, there are several, seven, several displays which display the input, analog inputs and analog outputs. Customer specifies which, what he wants to see. So after clicking any of these graphs or uh, fields, he can specify that he wants to see bearing temperature, for example, and it will be shown here, or um, nothing at all, for example because uh, too much information is not helping same time, sometimes. Uh, the same with analog outputs. They can be specified here. Mm -hmm. So fuel valve, for example, if, if you want, we want to see it. Uh, also, if we click the number, we can see, uh, sorry, if we click the number 
uh, on the input side or the uh, graph here, we can see the uh, ch chart, simple chart with which display what has happened with this input or output. Uh, in this example, during last five minutes, 10 minutes, but uh, we can go in the database back to the past up to the, let's say last week even. But uh, this is just a gizmo, I think, but because to see more complex data, we're using the trend button. And this is what I mentioned before. We can specify up to 10 trends. And uh, this is right now we have inlet pressure, suction pressure, discharge pressure, speed, some outputs and inputs. And customer, again, can specify what he wants to see. So he can click the select pen and, and pick the pen he wants or disable or uh, uh, this. Uh, if uh, there is a wish to change the title of the trend, we can change it as a new new t uh, new title and uh, it will change to the new title uh, whatever and, uh, all this configuration can be done uh, for 10 different sets of data 10 different trends uh, this is the example and uh, uh, as I said, uh, user specifies up to 12 pens. Uh, it can be stopped or st stopped, started. It can be also zoomed if needed, so we can scale the zoom if we are interested in some elements only. We can extend them um, also with time, so we can see second by second what has happened during this time. Um, I think this is all about trends. We have overview screen, uh, different types. This is one of the types only. And uh, it is also configurable, but uh, because these uh, parameters don't change too quickly, uh, too often, they are not changing very often. It's usually done once uh, during the startup. So we can specify here. Uh, how many stages we have and what what kind of analog inputs and outputs should be displayed here. Uh, to do this, there must be some different, different uh, user. So this is what I was saying. So. Uh, so now we have this button. Uh, and we can change, and uh, its number of stages was not three, but two. For any reason, customer wants to change it, he can change it himself, and then he will see whatever is specified on this uh, screen. I didn't say about uh, metric units and imperial units. Uh, from configuration screen, screen it, it can be changed. So suddenly uh, we don't use metric units. We customer wants to use uh, imperial units. And now the data is displayed in PSI and Fahrenheit, and uh, everything is changed. Uh, quickly about maintenance. Uh, so this is uh, input and outputs. This is when a user with the right a clearance, of course, not everybody can do this, uh, can bypass all alarming um, on chosen inputs and perform maintenance when unit is running. To preserve, to because this is kind of dangerous, that if we forget to enable them, maybe some alarms will not be armed. So we have, we have a timer which would expire. Mm after some time and then alarm will be uh, armed again. Uh, discrete output forcing is easy and uh, run hours, this is what I mentioned about specifying uh, some custom alarms like change engine oil, change compressor oil, and the configuration can say when, how often, and uh, the alarm will pop and remind the user uh, about the problem. 
the last thing I'd like to mention is some add-ins, additional stuff which can be our program can take care. Uh, with compressors, quite often there are third-party uh, control units like uh, Waukesha engines. Oh, we have some alarm. This is an example of the banner for alarm of the temperature. Um, there are some external third-party control units like Wakesha ESM for the Wakesha engines or for uh, Caterpillar engines. We have Adam 3 and uh, other control additional third-party uh, equipment. We grabbing the data using whatever mean is uh, available. Uh, quite often, this is just Modbus uh, reading the data uh, using the Modbus, and then we display it on the screen, and uh, including uh, everything what is uh, available from this uh, third-party control uh, panels. Uh, it saves customer quite often the time money because he doesn't have to have he doesn't have to purchase the displays for these units, which are very often optional, he can use the Guardian program to display all data available. Uh, one of the features which is worth to show is our Guardian AFR uh, part. Uh, air fuel ratio is important for the um, for the exhaust ex exhaust uh, uh, condition, and uh, so uh, we are engines are running uh, uh, as uh, efficient as possible. With our AFR program, user also can specify what kind of inputs and outputs, what signals are used, and how they affect uh, the specified output. And this is the configuration screen again, which would say, uh, specify what, how we want AFR unit to run and uh, how to interact between some specific inputs and outputs. User can specify the curve here based on the available data. And uh, this, is, uh, this is what cus customers which uses, that they like it and they think this is quite useful. Right now, we experience some uh, high temperature on the uh, egg, uh, cylinders. Uh, of course, everything is simulated, so we're just running too long, So, and our temperature is uh, kind of high, so I will stop the unit. Uh, Pavel, thank you very much for the presentation. Very impressive what you have designed there, the, the level of flexibility. Uh, that customers have to customize their applications during the runtime and how fast they can do that. So I appreciate you took the time to share it with all of us. And now uh, we will open for Q&A. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to write them down on the uh, chat box on the webinar on the top of your monitor or even on the Q&A box and we'll be more than happy to address your questions as uh, they, they come up. So we have the first um, one here. Uh, I see some, so in my native language, I see there's some uh, question from Marcin Bielawski. Uh, how many uh, variables are used for configuration? So uh, can I answer in English or I can answer in Polish language? I, let me answer in English first. Uh, we monitor and read about 20,000 tags from the PLC. However, in the Indusoft, we're using a little more than 3,000 tags only because we, right now we are using multiplexing. So the same uh, tags are used for each screen. They are repeated. And this way we can save some money for the customer for the licensing which probably Indusoft is not happy about it, but uh, this is how it works. So over 20,000 uh, variables, over 20,000 variables, and uh, we're using 3,000 in Indusoft tags uh, to read them. And that's absolutely fine. In Indusoft, we have several tools 
to to make the application flexible and allow what uh, uh, Pavel mentioned as multiplexing. So indirect access to tags by custom properties, by indirect tags, by uh, arrays, and there are many many different ways of doing that, and that's perfectly fine and valid. Uh, and a nice thing as well is is if the project grows and you need more tags, uh, it's just a matter to upgrade the license and you don't have to redesign the whole project or install a different product. Yes, and license can, can be upgraded over the email. It doesn't have to be any purchase uh, physical done. It can be, it, that, that's which we, we, we were about. doing this. Right, and this is true even for hard keys. And as we mentioned, hard keys can be upgraded remotely as well, even the USB dongles that, that you can use as, as licenses. And as I mentioned in my email, uh, whenever you upgrade the license or the product to a newer version, uh, we keep 100% of compatibility with applications designed in previous versions of the product. So you do not have to uh, recreate, redesign your application. Uh, another question here is how many different languages the software supports during the runtime? During the runtime, as I said, we have our standard unit is two languages, but uh, we can relatively easy increase it to uh, three languages or higher. Now, there is no limitation because uh, because the way how uh, translation is done, user can specify. So even if somebody wants to use the Klingon language, uh, it is also possible. Uh, of course, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to look up what this language was. But you are absolutely correct. From the software point of view, uh, we do not impose any limitation. As Pavel demonstrated, he incorporated two languages in, 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 the, in the project he demonstrated. Uh, but the software supports unlimited messages during the runtime, even for uh, languages and, and characters Unicode, uh, like Chinese, Japanese, and so on and so forth. Yes. Uh, so, and to add a new language, you don't have to go through the screens, through the, the configuration. You literally open a table, like an Excel table in the product, which already mm -hmm. has all the, the phrases in the original language that you designed the product, and all you have to do is write the translation in the second column for whatever language or languages uh, you select. Uh, and sometimes I cheat and I just copy the, the complete set of, uh, of phrases from this table, uh, select all and control C, go to a translator like Google uh, slash translate, uh, copy the translations there and paste into in the in the same uh, worksheet. So, and obviously after that, you or someone else can go there and edit specific terms, specific phrases uh, that might not have been properly translated by the automated uh, engine. But it's very simple and very fast to translate the whole application to as many languages as you want. I'd like to mention also about languages that we incorporated the, this feature into Excel spreadsheet, and it can be done automatically from our uh, Excel spreadsheet. Uh, our configuration spreadsheet, it's, uh, part, it's not part of the package. This is what was developed for us to make very quick changes for the whole configuration, which is prepared in advance and then sent to the PLC and HMI in one moment. We're using the uh, RS links, for example, when we communicate with the PLC to send the data there from the Excel spreadsheet or OPC server if we talk to Modicon uh, um, uh, PLCs. Um, so the spreadsheet is built as an uh, OPC client and sends the data in one chunk. It saves lots of time because all this configuration, to go through all this configuration, it's hours would be from using the touch screen. With, uh, HM, uh, with Excel spreadsheet, it's 10, 15 minutes, no more. Yeah, and that's an approach that's becoming very popular and shows the flexibility you can uh, design all the configuration in Excel or even in a database, an MDB file, XML files, in any format that you feel more comfortable. 
Indosoft has the ability to load or write data to those external documents, either to configure the application on the fly or generate reports and information to the outside world. So, excellent. I think uh, those are all the questions we received. So, again, uh, I would like to thank each and all of you for taking your time for the webinar. And, Pavel, thanks again for your time and for the excellent demonstration here. And congratulations on, on a template application very well designed. And thank you again for sharing it with us. And uh, for all uh, the participants, thank you again for your time. Hopefully the information was useful for you. And I hope to see you again in the next Indosoft webinar. Have a great day or a great evening and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you also. Thank you everybody for attendance and thank you Indusoft for having me here. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you, Pavel. Bye-bye.